नमस्कार वी विल कंटिन्यू विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन मॉड्यूल 6.4 व्हिच इज कंज्यूमर परसेप्शन रिस्क एंड इमेजरी इन इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द डेफिनेशन एंड मीनिंग ऑफ कंज्यूमर परसेप्शन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन परसेप्शन एंड सेंसेशन द नेचर ऑफ परसेप्शन द परसेप्चुअल प्रोसेस एंड द मैकेनिज्म एंड वी वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द परसेप्चुअल मैकेनिज्म इन डिटेल वेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड परसेप्चुअल सिलेक्शन and we shall uh, be discussing perceptual organization and interpretation in today's class so we will basically be talking about and continuing the perceptual mechanism uh, discussion on a perceptual mechanism uh, we have discussed yesterday perceptual uh, selection where we spoke about what is perceptual selectivity uh, the various factors which affect the selectivity of a stimuli uh, which were factors internal and related to the perceiver and factors external and related to the stimuli as we we discussed earlier the stimuli could be in the form of a product or a brand or uh, anything to do with the four p's any and all of these could act as a stimuli and there are certain factors with respect to uh, your certain characteristics with respect to the stimuli which affect selectivity of stimuli and there are also certain factors internal and related to the perceiver uh, which affects uh, perceptual selectivity we also discussed uh, sensory threshold uh, absolute thresholds and differential thresholds and we discussed uh, certain concepts of perceptual selectivity like perceptual defense perceptual attention um, you know response salience and response disposition so uh, today uh, we will uh, continue with uh, with our discussion on for the perceptual uh, mechanism and we will uh, move to uh, perceptual perceptual organization but before we do that uh, i would just like to uh, repeat here that the perceptual mechanism is affected by two kinds of factors factors internal and related to the perceiver and factors external and related to the stimuli now both of these factors not only have an impact on perceptual selection but they will also have a per impact on perceptual organization and interpretation so that's the reason why i i re am repeating that uh, you know the there are these two factors which have an impact uh, not only on selectivity but also organization and interpretation as well uh, so uh, people perceive things differently because their perceptual mechanisms are different and if each of us are unique uh, we, we are affected by uh, our demographic characteristics as well as uh, sociological and psycho psychological influences and so uh, there is a great deal of subjectivity with respect respect to uh, the perceptual mechanism and the overall perceptual interpretation so let us now move forward and discuss what perceptual organization is so after the inputs have been received in the perceptual selectivity state after they have been given attention to uh, the various uh, cues or the various stimuli or information uh, with respect to these cues is organized into a coherent whole it is organized into a comprehensible structure uh, a unified form a more coherent uh, form so as to be able to uh, give meaning to it in this particular stage so a perceptual organization is what happens uh, in the perceptual mechanism once information from the inf from the environment in the form of a stimuli and the cues is received so a perceptual organization is a highly cognitive process which is uh, responsible for uh, you know in organizing the stimuli and the various cues to develop a whole picture or unified picture or co coherent whole and this is going to happen according again according to one's uh, background in terms of demographics also in terms of the sociological influences and the psychographic uh, factors so the process which which begins once a uh, stimuli is selected uh, is is there and you know is, is referred to a perceptual organization where uh, the different cues or the different stimuli are uh, put together uh, you know as a unified whole as a coherent picture to derive a meaning out of it now uh, people are exposed to different stimuli they, they, they do not react to them as separate or unrelated identities but they group them together as a coherent form or as a unified whole this principle or this organization of the stimuli uh, is based on you know the, the organization of the stimuli is based on certain principles which uh, were first proposed by the jesolt uh, school of psychology and thereby these principles have come to be known as the jesolt principles uh, the term jesolt in german basically means pattern or configuration or a unified whole so the various stimuli 
uh, or the various cues associated with the stimuli, the, the information associated with the stimuli, they all put together, they all pattern together on configured and configured as a whole or as a single unit. And this is done with the help of uh, the Gisalt principles. So, uh, the, the marketer basically should you know aim that is he, the, that he should aim at uh, in implementing the principles of Gisalt philosophy to work in favor of the product or to work in favor of the brand. So, once a stimuli is uh, you know people are exposed to a stimuli, they do not look at a stimuli as single individual pieces of cues or of information, but they try to look them look upon them as a unified whole, they try to give them a, a, a coherent form, they, want, they try to give it a coherent structure and these various stimuli or these various cues are given um, you know try, they, they, they are given a form which is more unified, more coherent and more integrated because finally, the interpre interpretation would actually be based on this unified whole or, or perception of this integrated whole. Now, uh, the, the, the principles on which this particular uh, perceptual organization is based uh, is has was contributed by the Gisalt school of philosophy and have come to be known as the Gisalt principles, uh, which Gisalt meaning configuration or pattern or a whole. So, the various stimuli are looked to, the various stimuli or the cues are basically looked upon as a single whole, they are looked upon as a unified whole and that gives them the uh, meaning uh, that gives them the uh, you know term that is the term as the Gisalt principles. So, we will talk about uh, the Gisalt principles in little detail, but before we do that uh, we must also discuss the factors which affect the Gisalt perception. Now, uh, there are factors uh, which are stimulus factors as, as said they relate to the stimulus and there are also certain factors which are regarded as um, the individual factors. So, these are these pertain basically to the to the uh, to the individual. So, uh, let us see or to the person or to the perceiver. So, let us see what these stimulus factors are. You may uh, find a, a repetition uh, of you know in terms of a uh, little bit of repetition in terms of what we spoke yesterday in terms of selectivity because the same characteristics which affect selectivity will also have an impact on uh, perceptual organization. So, the stimulus factors refer to uh, the, 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 the characteristics of the stimulus which are uh, observable or which are more explicit. Okay. Now, these stimulus as we have discussed could be a person, object or a situation. In marketing terms, it will be a product of brand, uh, the price or the store or the ambience or the advertisement or the packaging and so forth. So, factors related to the stimulus or factors related to product, brand or the 4 P's basically would again uh, include um, you know size, motion, intensity, familiarity, novelty, contrast, position, isolation. So, most of these factors we have already discussed yesterday in, in our session on uh, on, on perceptual selectivity. Uh, those which we have not discussed are uh, color and contrast position, isolation and unity. So, we will discuss this. The rest of it of course, yesterday we discussed that size, the larger the letters, the larger the words, uh, the larger the size it is going to be uh, have an impact on organization and interpretation on uh, it is going to have an impact on selection and organization. Similarly, intensity or force or power of the stimuli, uh, the, the movement of the stimuli or the motion, uh, the repetition of a stimuli, the familiarity of a stimuli uh, in a novel setting or the novelty in a familiar setting, all of these uh, will have an impact uh, not only on selectivity, but also organization of the stimulus. So, we will now uh, have talk about uh, color and contrast, position, isolation and unity, which also have an impact on uh, perceptual organization. Talking about color, color, color always uh, gains attention, it, it catches greater attention and uh, you know more organization of cues uh, than black and white, uh, but uh, you know it has been observed that it can lose its impact when it is used with other uh, colored uh, you know advertisements or colored material. So, that is where the contrast effect comes into picture and a, a colored advertisement uh, in a black and white a newspaper or a black and white ad in a you know a, on a color TV uh, on a colored channel uh, which will actually act as a contrast and lead to greater attention and greater organization of stimuli. 
So, we have color and contrast which acts as an imp has an impact on perceptual organization. Position is again something which has a role to play in not only in a perceptual selectivity, but organization as, as well. In fact, uh, when, we, when we spoke about uh, sensory receptors yesterday, we saw how the five sense organs I, you know, at, get attracted to certain kinds of stimulus and uh, position has a big role to play. So, we have our language English which runs uh, you know, left to right on a page. So, in the case uh, of where, where we see uh, language like English which moves from left to right, uh, the upper, uh, upper half of the page gets more attention than the lower half and the left hand side uh, gets more attention than the right hand side. So, when we look at a page or a book, it is the upper side of the page and the left side of the page or uh, which, which gets more attention than either the lower half of the page or the right side of the page. Uh, this will of course, vary with languages in Urdu, it would be opposite in Persian, it would be opposite. So, uh, you know this basically accounts for uh, price differences in newspapers and magazines where the price of an advertisement differs according to the place or according to the position of the advertisement or the insert in the newspaper. So, we see that there are different rates of when you have to place your news advertisement in the newspaper, there are different rates for different positions on a page or different places on a page. This is even true with respect to any other print media be it magazines or be it journals. So, the, 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 the upper side of the page or the left side of the page will always receive more attention and because it receives a greater attention, these sides of the page are you know the charges are much higher than the other parts of the page or the other side of the page. Uh, isolation, instead of uh, you know being closer when a stimulus stands away from others, it, the chances of it getting perceived or uh, are much greater, the chances of it getting uh, organized uh, in the form of different cues is much greater when it is clustered with other stimuli. And of course, unity is also used as a principle while organizing various stimuli. Unity uh, can be achieved by through application of the German school of psychology through their principles of proximity, similarity and density. So, uh, talking about proximity, proximity those uh, you know stimuli which are placed to, to close to others form groups like for example, in terms of uh, product selling on uh, in stores, uh, you know products uh, breakfast cereal will always be stored very close to uh, you know uh, dried skim milk powder or uh, you know uh, biscuits or fruit juice because it is regarded that these products are used together in the morning at the time of breakfast. So, they are, cl are placed together to form close groups. Similarly, there is tips principle of similarity where stimuli which is similar is placed to together uh, to each to form group. So, uh, you know you have different uh, kind of toiletries or different kinds of soaps put all together once one along with the other because they are similar uh, in terms of product category or you have uh, you know density that stimuli that have common density units form groups. So, it could be in the form of size and shape the size of package, the shape of package they are similar. So, they are put together, they are put similarly. So, the principle of proximity, similarity and, and density, they, they are not only, they are going to have an impact when people are going to organize facts around them. So, very fact that uh, you know uh, juice is kept you know is kept in a corner also means that uh, you know breakfast cereal will be put there. This you know people tend to organize these things as facts because they relate the usage of the products in conjunction or at usage of the products simultaneously or in relation to each other. So, we have these principles which are external and related to the stimuli which not only affect perceptual selectivity, but they also affect perceptual organization. Apart from that, we have uh, the individual factors which actually relate to the perceiver. We again have discussed this in the previous session and there may be a little repetition, but uh, for the sake of understanding perceptual organization, I will again repeat uh, some of this again. Uh, you know these, these relate to the individual, these relate to the perceiver and are actually characteristic of the consumer. So, uh, the consumer motivation, need, pattern, his wants, his learnings, his experiences, uh, the personality and self-image are all going to have an impact on how he is going to organize facts around uh, stimuli or organize the various cues or the stimuli to give them a meaningful home, whole. 
so uh, these characteristics have a role to play in organization in selectivity organization and interpretation and they will differ from person to person and so they will be very subjective in nature they will be uh, less measurable and quantifiable uh, we have already discussed motivation uh, learning uh, and personality yesterday in the previous session what we have not discussed is interest involvement and values so uh, we will have a small discussion here on how interests values and involvement also has an impact on perceptual organization now the interest levels as we know vary from person to person and they will uh, you know the, the the some generalization with respect to interests may be made on the basis of demographic factors like age or gender or uh, social class and lifestyle and people will vary across gender and age with respect to the level of interest that they have for for products or for brands or for any kind of activities and general interests involvement is uh, the degree of with which a person approaches a person or an object or a stimuli so it's basically uh, reflective of how important and relevant uh, something is to a person this something could be a product or a brand or price so when the level of involvement is high the consumer will be more attentive to any inf kind of information that is provided and he'll try to you know figure out or try to uh, create a meaningful picture of whatever he is being exposed to uh, and in this case information gathering processing retention and recall will be very high so he will perceive the offering as differently as compared to one who is not that involved uh, values also have a role to play people are receptive to such product or service service offerings that are more in tune or the, that are more in congruence with their culture with their subculture and their value system and there will be a perceptual defense when they are exposed to a stimuli which does not match their values or goes against their value system or their opinions or their attitude so these are factors which are internal and related to a perceiver which will have an impact on not only on selection but also on organization and interpretation uh, the motivation need patterns uh, the the learning experiences personality self image values interests level of involvement all of these will have an impact on how well a person gives a coherent form or how well does he give a unified form to the various cues and the stimuli that have been Uh, that he has been exposed to now uh, we will move further to discuss the basic some principles of perceptual organization uh, talking about the basic principles of perceptual organization we have uh, you know uh, some uh, four of these principles which we will talk of the figure and ground grouping perceptual uh, grouping closure and uh, simplification so there are four basic principles for perceptual organization figure and ground grouping closure and simplification so we'll start with a figure and ground now um, when when we talk about figure and ground uh, we are basically saying that any stimuli that stands apart from the environment tends to get more noticed anything that comes out anything that strikes out anything that contrasts out from a background or from an environment is more likely to be noticed and treated as a unified whole it is not only going to be it's going to be something which is going to stand out and be interpreted as something different to the background or to the whole so it stands apart from the environment and contrasts again it and it is looked up as a unified whole so the figure basically stands clearly against a background or in contrast to the background and this particular stimulus it acts as a figure and uh, gets noticed and the background acts as the ground so the the stimulus acts as a figure a stimulus acts as a figure as against the background which stands as the ground so anything which strikes out from the environment or from a background is going to be more uh, you know um, looked up, it's going to be given a more imp, imp, you know it's going to be given a form it's going to be organized much better uh, in terms of this principle called the figure and ground principle so uh, the figure has to clearly stand out now how is this uh, relevant to a marketer it's very very relevant you know you while placing your brands in the store always make sure that your brands should stand out against uh, the you know the 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 whole a bunch of brands which are placed there so your you, the whole variety of different brands that are placed there your brand should strike out your brand should 
come out it should basically it, it should be such that it stands apart from the rest of the uh, brands which are placed there so this could happen uh, you know when you have a good packaging so packaging uh, decisions are always taken with th th with this in mind that the product uh, should stand out it should stand against the environment so you have uh, different kinds of flashy colors being used in packages larger font size bigger letters uh, you know and, and a very attractive packaging so uh, you know the, so that the the other brands erode to the uh, you know background and they recede to the background and your brand strikes out or comes out or shines out so this is uh, while placing the brands the packaging should be such that the brand stands out okay while designing advertisements also we must see that the brand or the product must be the figure and the message context the scenery, the picture or the endorser or the celebrity is the background. So, the, the focus here has to be on the packaging, on the brand name or on the contents of the package rather than anything else oh, in terms of the music or the jingle or the celebrity or the, the scenery or the beauty. So, uh, it is essential that footage is basically given to the product and to the brand rather than to the model or the celebrity. Now, we, we know very well that the model or the celebrity can, should not be ignored as well because going by principle of stimulus uh, generalization, uh, people uh, attach a lot of and, and going by the level of credibility that these spokesperson have or these the source has, uh, it, it could translate into greater credibility or uh, you know greater uh, reliability with respect to the product or service that these people are endorsing because they themselves are reputed have some level of con credibility. So, uh, we cannot negate the, the, the impact of the principle of stimulus generalization uh, when it comes to uh, an endorser, a celebrity, his reputation, his credibility and the reputation and credibility being translated into the brand. We cannot ignore that, but nevertheless we must not give so much of importance or so much of footage to them that our brand receives into the background or our product receives into the background uh, and, and, and they shine out. Rather, it is our brand which should stand out, which should shine out. So, we should uh, give, you know, it is essential that footage is given uh, to, uh, to the product and to the brand rather than to the spokesperson. So, um, the marketing stimulus, whether it is the product or the image or the message should stand out. The advertisement uh, should not be so uh, entertaining or so visually appealing or engrossing that uh, the people you know uh, or so emotionally appealing that people get involved in the ad or in the message rather than being involved uh, with the brand or with the product. So, uh, so, the target audience should be able to basically differentiate very clearly between the product image and the message as the figure and uh, other things the scenery or the model which acts as the ground or at which acts as the contrast. So, the, the, the focus here or the product, the focus here should be the product, the, the, the product here should be the figure okay, and the spokesperson should recede to the background. So, it is very important that while making decisions with respect to packaging all while making decisions with respect to advertisements, you keep the figure and ground principle in mind because what is more relevant here is that, that, that the product should stand out. Okay. What is more relevant, the package should be good so that it stands out, it is recognized well uh, much more above and uh, against the background or the, against the other brands. The, the celebrity is good, fine. Uh, but the product has to stand out, it is not the celebrity who has to stand out, but the product has to stand out, uh, has to be in recall, has to be in remembrance. So, it is very important that you, 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 your product or the brand remains the figure and not the ground, the rest of it should be the ground, the message context, the scenery, the music, the jingle, they ought to be the context and not the they, they ought to be the they, they ought to be the background, they ought to be the ground and not the figure, the figure has to be the product or the brand. Now, let us come to the second principle which is grouping. Now, people basically tend to uh, group stimuli together uh, and you know they tend to group together the various stimuli so that they are seen as a uh, as they are seen as a unified whole and the basis of such stimuli is two. One uh, sim similarity of the stimuli which we just discussed a little while ago and the second is the proximity of the stimuli. So, the grouping of uh, the discrete and distinct pieces of stimuli is done basically to facilitate our learning process, to facilitate uh, the storage in the memory, 
the easy uh, and easy retrieval and recall as and when required. So, people tend to you know uh, put together the various stimuli so that they are given a unified whole and the basis of such is similarity among stimuli or the proximity among stimuli because this grouping is going to have an impact on our uh, learning it is going to have an impact on our uh, you know storage in in memory and easy recall that is one of the reasons why when we when we remember or when we try to memorize phone numbers of people or mobile numbers of people we try to form a pattern between them for each easier uh, recall for easier remembrance. So, thing you know we try to try to bring about some uh, some 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 pattern we try to arrange between those numbers so that we can recall them easily. So that is actually a part of the grouping. So let us first talk about the simula similarity among stimuli uh, and the stimuli or the elements that are similar should be grouped together. As they look similar to one another, people feel that they can be grouped as a unified whole or they can be per the people perceive them as a group or a pattern. For example, uh, in an international conference, people and their national personalities are often identified on the dress that they are wearing. All the, the those dressed similarly are perceived to belong to a particular country or to a particular nation. So, if you look at it, if you talk of it in terms of marketing, people are rushing to a store that announces a discount can be grouped together as they as price sensitive stores or as price sensitive consumers or deal prone consumers. So, pr similarly products with a similar packaging are perceived as the same. So, this accounts for the success of the me too or the imitation products or a stimulus generalization as we have spoken of earlier. So, you know uh, people uh, uh, you know the various stimuli or the various elements in the stimuli are regarded as similar to each other because they are regarded as uh, similar to each other and they are grouped together. So, any and all sti stimuli which is similar is grouped together and is regarded as a single whole. People are you know recognized by their dress, by their mannerisms and said to belong to a particular country or a community or a culture or a social class. Uh, products are put together you know uh, so that again to give as I just told you those products uh, breakfast cereal will be kept with skimmed milk powder or with fruit juice because they are going to be used in conjunction with each other and there is some similarity with level with with respect to the level with respect to the uh, you know the usage situation. So, uh, you know also people who, who behave similarly are perceived as one group like for example, uh, people who run after discounts or deals would be put together as deal prone consumers. Products uh, which also finally as we as I just said products which are which appear to packaging appears to be similar are regarded as the same and we have this a principle of stimulus generalization where imitation or me too products gain a lot just because of owing to similarity in their packaging. So, that is with respect to similarity amongst stimuli. Another principle which we talk of is the proximity of the stimuli. Uh, the, the stimuli or elements that stand close together uh, in some way are grouped together. So, because they stand close to each other people perceive them as a group or a pattern. For example, people walking together or sitting together are generally perceived to be forming a you know a friend circle or a uh, you know friendship group. So, just because these stimuli are placed together or close to each other they are perceived as a single whole. Uh, in marketing terms you know we have display of soaps in a shelf space giving us uh, the impression that all the other FMCGs whether it is soap, shampoos and other toiletries will be placed together and all of the various soaps will be stored there or will be stocked there. So, because they are similar to each other in, in terms of usage and because they are placed together we will uh, have because they are placed together we, we, we will believe that um, they they are supposed to be f you know serving the same need pattern or the same need. So, it is not all soaps will be placed together on a single shelf different brands put together and this could also be related to other uh, FMCGs which are also placed in F, you know close to them. So, they are all perceived as being stored in one section which is toiletries. So, uh, you know just because of the because of the being placed together because of they being put together we perceive them as a single whole. So, we say all soaps put together on a shelf or all uh, you know toiletries put together in a particular uh, shelf. So, uh, again a, st a stimuli in the advertisement for example, comprises a number of things uh, you know you have um, an example where uh, people uh, you know they show uh, having coffee 
on a winter evening with a fire uh, you know a fire uh, you know fireplace a fire burning wood uh, with you know you can, you can see wood wood burning in the fireplace or charcoal burning in the fireplace and uh, people uh, sitting near the fireplace with coffee in their uh, hand, with a cup of coffee in their hands and maybe wearing a jersey or a uh, you know or uh, you know a, a cap or something like that so this gives an, a feeling of warmth uh, this gives a feeling of togetherness uh, on uh, in you know in, in especially in respect to a winter season so these various uh, stimuli are placed together a quick together to give it uh, some level of uh, to interpret some level of interpretation that yes as a drink coffee is something which uh, people prefer in the winter season hot coffee after uh, in, in the evening uh, especially when they want to sit with their near and dear ones and when they want to be with people together the, the feeling of warmth and togetherness again uh, we can have another example here for example the the, the example the advertisement for raymond uh, you know the complete man so the stimuli comprises a party or a celebration and there's a couple a luxurious ambience the man wearing a suit so he's depicted as being very handsome very caring very loving very special and the proximity of a man in a suit to his surrounding imp environment impacts consumer perception in a manner that assumes some kind of an association or relationship between the usage of the product that is the suiting and shirting and a similar reaction and outcome in terms of looking handsome or feeling handsome or looking special or caring or loving and affectionate so the, the, the basically put together it all all of these stimuli give meaning uh, and and can be put the, all of these stimuli can be put together closely related to each other to give an identifiable or unifiable unified whole so uh, talking about uh, the the talking about perceptual uh, uh, you know uh, grouping as a principle uh, the implications that marketers need to draw is that consumers perceive uh, that products are similar to each other in appearance and use and are related to one another so that is why the marketers of me too products try to copy uh, the packaging of original brands also when marketers launch new brands uh, they should try and brand it as the blanket family name or go in for a corporate name combined with the individual product name and also have their brand logo so consumers perceive the new brand to be related to the old one in terms of the benefits uh, that they share the, uh, in, in terms of the benefits that they share the same logo so the benefit associated with the original product also gets translated into the new products which are launched also marketers should design their promotion messages in the manner uh, that the various cues and stimuli in, in close proximity with the product so it is a tendency on the part of people to associate cues with the product and see them in totality so the result is positive uh, emotions or feelings generated by one or few stimuli can be tr translated to the rest of the stimuli in totality so as to create a positive output or a positive outcome uh, also we see consumers relate the various stimuli that lie in proximity to one another so a product is perceived the same way as the stimuli uh, perceived in the hearing environment or the proximate surroundings so if a mood generated by a surrounding stimuli is regal and royal the product tends to get uh, related to sophistication and style so marketers must be very careful in using a stimuli that blends perfectly with the product so that's how we see how the principle of grouping whether in terms of stimularity or whether in terms of grouping has an impact on uh, trying to organize the cues or the stimuli into a unified whole in order to be able to finally give meaning to it now let us come to the next principle which is principle of closure now the this particular principle states that always uh, there is a need amongst individuals to uh, you know complete incomplete pieces of information whatever uh, is incomplete or whatever is missing there is a tendency on the part of people to fill in the gaps or fill in the empty spaces so uh, the closure principle states that when an object is identifiable it is identified as incomplete or uh, something which is uh, you know um, not a complete whole uh, and our senses basically uh, you know sense this incompleteness the perceptual processes come into play and give it a complete form so wherever and whenever there is an there is a gap 
or there is an incomplete in, in you know stimuli or incomplete uh, you know stimuli in the as sensed by our sense organs the perceptual mechanisms come into play and they try to give it a meaning they try to g fill in the gaps they try to fill in the you know incomplete parts and so as to give it a complete form so uh, the closure is said to happen when people uh, when the human mind perceives it as a complete whole rather than looking at it as incomplete where some of the elements or some of the stimuli are missing. So, there is a tendency basically to plug in the gaps or to fill in the hole and we call it this principle of closure. So, you know they, they people tend to perceive this incomplete picture by consciously or unconsciously uh, filling in the gaps or filling in the missing pieces. So, according to their learnings, according to their motives, according to uh, the, the, their backgrounds, according to their, uh, you know, the, the, their customs, traditions or sociological influences, they basically try to fill in the missing stimuli, fill in the pieces uh, with, to which they are exposed. So, whatever, whatever incomplete stimuli they are exposed to, they try to fill in the gap, they try to fill in the, fill in the complete, if, uh, so as to give it a complete information based on their own demographic characteristics or based on their sociological influences or their psychographic factors. So, so wherever there is a gap, people will try to uh, fill in the missing pieces or people will try to fill in the gaps. So, the, the principle or the, uh, the, the implication that marketers need to draw out is that, uh, you know, uh, they, they, when marketers for example, uh, consumers watch an advertisement on TV, when they hear the audio on TV and hear the jingle, in the need for completion, uh, they, they can form mental images and replay the advertisement as shown on TV. So, you know, for example, uh, when, we, when a consumer watches an ad on TV and when they hear the audio on TV and hear the jingle, they immediately can form mental images and replay the ad. So, uh, the very fact that they have seen an ad once, but now they are not seeing it, only hearing it, they will have a tendency to have a mental image or a mental picture of whatever they had it and, and that mental image can basically replay in their mind. So, the, 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 the stimuli is incomplete because they cannot watch it, they are just hearing it, but because they have watched it in the past, because of their past learnings, they are able to, you know, even at the, even at the sound of a jingle, they are able to put in pieces together and say yes this jingle uh, is for that brand. So, if there is an uh, ad for an Alpenliebe where they show how Alpenliebe is said. So, the moment a person even if he or she is uh, and then there is a jingle just without the word Alpenliebe, just the sound of the jingle people will be able to recall that yes, this is for Alpenliebe and that is how. Even similarly, uh, for Titan and for Tanishq where they have a beautiful jingle. The, the very fact that people just hear the jingle, they are able to immediately fill in the gap and say yes, this jingle uh, is a jingle from Titan Raga or from Tanishq and so they are able to fill in the gaps. So, implications uh, for a marketer are that you know even if the information is incomplete, people have a tendency to put in or fill in inf uh, fully fill in the pieces. So, in cases of incomplete information as well, people will draw out their own inferences, people will draw out their own, uh, you know, they organize their facts on their own and draw out their inferences. So, uh, this particular principle of closure can also be used by a marketer to generate audience participation. Uh, you know, many a times uh, people, uh, uh, you know, uh, the marketer asks you, to fill in, uh, you know, a storyline, for example. So they write uh, ten or say three or four sentences uh, on a story and uh, on a product or on a brand or on the usage of a product or a brand, and then they ask you to complete it. Or there are uh, elements like, say, I like Maggie because. So write in ten words. So something like this, they try. They, it is through this. It is actually the application of this principle of closure. They want to bring about, or they want to seek audience participation of how audience reacts, or how audience thinks, and how does audience fill in this stimuli. So that will give uh, fill in this missing stimuli. So this will give the marketer an idea about what a pe what the consumer feels like, or what people feel about the brand, or what how is the brand uh, you know a, a, a kind of viewed or perceived in the target segment or amongst consumers. Similarly, there are teaser elements which happen, you know, which, which are put in and the consumers may be asked to fill in the gaps. It could also happen in the form of 
cartoon pictures where one cartoon says something and you are asked to fill in the response of the other uh, you know cartoon uh, character. So, that is how uh, that the marketers basically try to create consumer interest, consumer attention, involvement and try to seek to bring about some kind of a attention. So, in order to encourage audience participation audience or say consumer attention or consumer involvement and consumer excitement many times marketers very successfully use this principle of closure. Now, uh, base, we will we'll come to the principle the fourth principle which is principle of simplification. So, as the principle as the name suggests the principle of simplification states that human beings have a tendency to uh, simplify things, they want to make things less complex, they want to make things more uh, simple. So, they have a you know they have a tendency to make things uh, more uh, simple so as to be able to understand them better or to understand them quicker. So, when people are exposed to large sets of information they, they have a tendency to subtract or to you know to, to the less important ones or not to give importance to the less important or the less relevant ones and they give more importance to such stimuli or to the inform such information which they consider to be more important, more relevant and more uh, you know uh, uh, more uh, in even in, in, in more wanted by them. So, anything which they feel is unwanted or irrelevant or not very important or not very significant is shunned away or is deleted or modified or not given attention to at all or it is not given uh, it is it's basically they try to subtract all that delete all that and give more importance to anything which they consider important or substantial or more relevant. So, this is basically done to, to give some relief to our cognitive processes. We discussed in the previous session also that our cognitive capabilities, our cognitive capacities are limited. So, in order to not to put too much of pressure on the human mind or into our cognitive capacities and capabilities, there is a tendency on the part of individuals to delete or to you know give less important to stimuli or information which is irrelevant and give more information more importance to or, or to more give more uh, in, in relevance to something which is more important and relevant to us. So, uh, for example, if our need is a laptop you know, person who wants to buy a laptop uh, he will browse through brochures of different companies look for different configuration look for uh, the keywords rather than reading the brochure sentence by sentence. So, <coughs> so excuse me. So, if a person uh, is wanting to buy a laptop what he does is he just wants to search and get keywords on what uh, evaluative criteria laptop should possess. So, these evaluative criteria could be in terms of speed, memory or uh, you know uh, the configuration etcetera. And so, the, the instead of reading a brochure sentence by sentence or line by line this particular person would look for the keywords. So, that is what he does basically to uh, you know we all have a tendency to do this when very often we highlight anything important with a highlighter or with a flashy pen. So, that it immediately strikes out and is regarded as important and the other information can be left behind and regarded as irrelevant. So, how is this uh, relevant to a marketer you know marketers should um, basically draw attention uh, from this principle uh, that they must avoid any kind of clutter of information too much of information is something which the consumer will like to ignore they like to avoid they will not give they will not give any attention to it at all. So, it is very uh, important that marketers uh, you know identify what what is relevant to the consumer and they present only that they present that kind of an information especially in print media where people will not like to read too much or in audio visual media where uh, everything has to be said very quickly in say a 30 40 seconds. So, it is very important that you highlight and you say what is more important than what is less important. So, whatever information you want to provide should be short, should be crisp, should be very precise and uh, you know what and, and, and yes in terms of print media uh, you know you could use uh, basically the we could you play on the characteristics of the stimuli like you could use color or font or alphabets or size of alphabets. So, which, which could strike out. So, okay, so, that what is relevant, what is important has to come ahead, has to come forth, come come you know come forward and other things can be left behind because uh, people consumers do not prefer any kind of a clutter. They would like to lie, they want information which is less uh, and, and much more worthy, much more precise and much more crisp than having too much of information which is regarded as a clutter or as an information 
overload. So, so with this, uh, we basically uh, come to uh, uh, you know a discussion. We come to a close on perceptual organization. Now, let us come to uh, to further to perceptual interpretation. So, after uh, the the input has been given attention to, and after it has been organized, the next thing what happens is perceptual interpretation, where we extract meaning out of this unified whole or out of this coherent whole. So, this is called as perceptual uh, interpretation. It is a purely cognitive process, uh, which is basically responsible for uh, extracting relevant information from the stimuli or from the whole picture, from the coherent picture which one has been exposed to and one has organized. Uh, this particular process is totally subjective based from in, in different from individual to individual. In fact, it is this which leads to differences in perception amongst people. People may be exposed to the same stimuli, but they, they perceive it differently because of this particular uh, you know component uh, majorly because of this particular component in the perceptual mechanism process people uh, will interpret stimuli subjectively in accordance with their needs their wants their expectations so that is why uh, we say that perception will differ from person to person and again similar to perceptual org selection and organization perception is also affected by characteristics internal to the perceiver and external to the stimuli. So, it is also very much affected by the kind of situation that is in question, the time availability, the location etcetera will also have an impact on the uh, ultimately on the process of perceptual interpretation. Uh, while uh, we say that the perceptual mechanism may be similar, ultimately we perceive things totally different. It is a very subjective process. Uh, we, we perceive things very differently from each other. Even uh, the same person may think perceive things differently at different times. Now, what does this happen? This basically happens because of certain uh, errors and distorting influences. So, these errors and distorting influences basically uh, impact our perceptual mechanism process and making our interpretation often uh, making the interpretation often faulty. Okay, so, why, why do people make uh, you know errors in perceptual interpretation or why do they make faults uh, while interpreting a particular stimuli in, or why do they incorrectly perceive stimuli? This is because of the, the this because of certain, uh, certain elements which we refer to or certain phenomena which we refer to as perceptual errors and distortions. So, let us talk about these errors and perceptual distortions. Uh, the first is a selective perception. People have a tendency to select, uh, you know, uh, things which are more uh, st select stimuli which is more relevant for them. So they perceive things which are more relevant, which are more important, or which are more, uh, imp you know, valuable to them. They perceive only thing. They perceive these things according to their demographic characteristics, their needs, their wants, their motives, their interests, their desires, their backgrounds their learning experiences, attitudes, apart from you know we have already discussed that they also influenced by the sociological influences in terms of their customs or their culture or their tradition and so forth. So, uh, let us take an example, uh, you know people have a tendency to perceive things which are relevant. So, we, 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 we this is uh, the and they would put aside things which are they consider as irrelevant. So, we can have an example here, a lady goes to a departmental store to buy shampoo, uh, ignoring uh, the various other shelves she or the various aisles she goes to aisle H, uh, where she had bought a shampoo a few weeks ago. Now, this is because she feels that uh, she is familiar with, uh, with the space and she has retained the exact location of this uh, the shampoos in her memory. So, she in, in absolutely ignores other shelves, she is totally uh, you know she does not look give any attention to other shelves and she just goes to shelf X without realizing that the shampoos have now been removed from shelf X, uh, shelf H have, have been placed on shelf B. So, she made an error by overlooking the shampoos on the shelf B and moved straight away to shelf H because she wants to look at things as per her familiarity, as per her relevance. Okay. So, based on her past experience, she has learnt uh, to be selective about the stimuli and so commits an error. So, here uh, she is wanting to perceive things according to the, her relevance and according to her familiarity with the stimuli. So, she, she actually ignores the other shelves, she, she puts them in oversight, she does not look them, look at them at all, it just moves to a particular shelf where things were placed earlier. So, this is one uh, error which she makes. So, her selection of stimuli and her organization of stimuli has been faulty resulting in uh, uh, percept distortion, total distortion of the uh, in terms of physical uh, in terms of perceptual interpretation. 
we also have other influences which are distorting influences people often make errors due to distorting influences uh, for example physical appearance people often judge others or people judge other stimuli products brand etc on the basis of physical appearance so just because a car looks beautiful or it is designed very aesthetically and very appealing uh, does not mean actually that it will it's robust enough or it will uh, give good mileage or it's you know it's technically sound but people often you know uh, feel that just because something is looking good or something is appealing good or aesthetically uh, you know uh, it must be good so this is this is what we call as an error on based on physical appearance marketers of course take advantage of this error which we all generally have a tendency to commit and so they they basically not only do they design their cars aesthetically in very uh, vibrant colors or bright colors uh, but they also design very beautiful ads where they show the interiors of the car the exteriors of the car and they show a appeal which is a social appeal family traveling together you know and enjoying themselves just to attract the buyer so this is one error which we all make uh, which is uh, you know physical appearance just because something is looking good we feel it's going to be technically good as well so the, the, the but manufacturers or marketers often take advantage of this particular error that we that we generally have a tendency to make um also another example can be marketers often use attractive models so attractive models are generally seen to be more persuasive than other average looking models and the good looks of the models actually uh, relate with the pleasurable outcomes uh, with the usage of the product another example another error which we make is a stereotyping people often judge other people on the basis of the characteristic of the group to which they belong so it is tendency to perceive a person based on his his peers or based on the member other members in the group so this this of course may not always be correct uh, so example chinese products they always regarded as low in price and inferior however all not all products may be inferior in quality yet they are stereotyped as being cheap uh sony is a good company it's a good brand somebody has a product uh, about sony he or she always concludes that any and everything good uh, uh, any a new other model which comes from sony will also be good so we are stereotyping this which may or may not always be correct irrelevant cues irrelevant cues are when people make uh, interpretations based on unmeaningful stimuli or irrelevant cues we say that an uh, you know the, uh, error has been made because of Uh, irrelevant cues so again uh, if you take the example of a car uh, we often get carried away by the design of a car or, or the looks of the car uh, or by the appeal rather than giving importance to the mileage the technology the engine etc we basically give more importance to the accessories and the and take a decision so this is making decisions on irrelevant cues first impressions people often make judgments on the basis of first impression this may not always be true it can be erroneous okay now but first impression has an implication for a marketer very very important a new product that is introduced into the market should be well tested market there should be a proper market test before introducing it because in case you know you have not tested it and it is launched and it fails it's going to be disastrous for the company okay so because also even if you tested it in case it fails in the market you're never going to be accepted as a you know an as a credible company or a credible product again because people have made judgment based on their first impressions so uh, we have uh, seen that people often uh, companies recruit sales persons who have a good personality and that is again because they want to create a good impression about their sales people when they first meet the customers jumping to conclusion people also make uh, you know errors by you know basically uh, arriving at a conclusion even before having gone through the entire stimuli um as a person knocks at your door and introduces himself as a person from eureka forbes even before he says that he's come to make a demo for a vacuum cleaner you immediately say oh ho we don't need a filter we already have aqua guard filter so this is a premature uh, statement that is made even before uh, he's completed his sentence so we call it jumping to conclusion inference is making a conclusion based on missing or incomplete information so uh, when a person assesses the quality of a product to be good just because it is priced very high it is actually uh, he is drawing an inference um, halo effect when a product or a person or a stimuli or anything is based uh, when it is perceived on the basis of a single trait we call it the halo effect in case the assessment is based on a good and a desirable it is called a positive halo effect in case it is based on something bad and undesirable it is called a reverse halo effect 
So we have Procter and Gamble, which has roped in Kajol as their brand ambassador for oil of ole. When per people perceive oil of ole to be a good lotion just because it is being endorsed by a successful actress like Kajol, so halo effect would come into play. And Kajol's presence overrides all other qualities present in Halo Effect or in a company called Procter & Gamble. Similarly, iPod has a positive impact on the perceptions of other products from Apple. So, with the success of iPod, other benefits have got translated to other products as well. So, we call it the Halo Effect. So, these are the different kinds of perceptual errors or distorting influences that we often get carried away with and we make in our judgments or in our perception, overall perception about, uh, about, about stimuli, whether they be products or whether they be brands or the four P's. With this, we come to a conclusion of this particular session. The references, ASEL, Consumer Behavior and Marketing Action Boss, uh, 4th edition, Loudon and Della Bitta, Consumer Behavior, 4th edition, Tata McGraw-Hill, Kotler and Keller, Marketing Management, 13th edition, Pearson, P Peter and Olson, Consumer Behavior, um, McGraw-Hill 7th edition, Schiffman and Kanu Consumer Behavior 8th edition, Prentice Hall and Wells and Prensky Consumer Behavior, John Wiley 1996. Frequently asked questions, discuss the four principles of perceptual organization, what are its marketing implications. So, you can ask, we ask this question, uh, coming to a short quiz. True false response disposition is the tendency to select a familiar stimuli rather than one which is uh, unfamiliar. So, the, uh, the answer to this is true. Uh, second, absolute threshold varies from person to person. Again, this is true. Uh, third, people often exhibit a tendency to arrive at conclusion even before having gone through the entire stimuli or information. This is referred to as inference. No, this is referred to as inference. This is a false statement. This is this is referred to as jumping to conclusion. Fill in the blanks. The organization of the stimuli is based on the DASH principles, based on the GISOL principles. Two, the DASH principle states that any stimuli that stands apart from the environment and contrasts against is more likely to be noticed and is treated as a unified whole. So, the figure and ground principle, uh, that is the answer. Question 3, when people make interpretations on the basis of irrelevant and unmeaningful stimuli, they are said to have made a perceptual error based on dash. They are said to be made an uh, error on perceptual, uh, they are said to have made a perceptual error based on irrelevant cues. So, the answer is irrelevant cues. When a single trait is perceived on the basis of, a, when a, sorry, when a stimuli is perceived on the basis of a single trait, it is called a dash, it is called a halo effect. Multiple choice questions, when exposed to a large number of stimuli simultaneously, people may block the various stimuli as they get stressed out. This is called dash, defense, blocking, barrier or none of the above. So, this is called perceptual blocking. People judge another person on the basis of the characteristic of the group to which he belongs. This is called A, inference, B, stereotype, C, jumping to conclusion, D, projection. So, this is called B, which is stereotype, B, stereotype. Finally, short answers mention the four principles of perceptual organization. So, figure and ground, grouping, closure and simplification and then write short notes on selective attention, grouping and irrelevant cues. This brings us to a conclusion of this particular session on perceptual uh, mechanisms. And uh, we, we have we are done with discussing perception. We shall be discussing a risk and imagery in the next session. Thank you.